Hello and welcome to The Seventh Rule uh, with Rock Lofton and Robert Duncan McNeil. Uh, my name is AKA, Ryan T. Hus. AKA Robbie, you can call me Robbie. If, right. if you call me Robert, I think I'm in trouble, so. <laughs> uh, my name is Ryan T. Husk, and we are celebrating Aaron Eisenberg. How you doing, Robbie? <laughs> I'm good, I'm good. Yes, let's celebrate Aaron for sure. He deserves it. Mm. Yeah, he does. So uh, right before we started recording, you were telling us a little bit uh, about how you and Aaron got to know one another. And you said you didn't really get to know him or most of the actors of uh, Deep Space Nine while you were recording on the show because all the chasm between the shows, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we, um, we were on stages eight and nine right across from... Ciroc, what were your stage numbers again? I uh, 4, 17, and 18. Yeah. So they were, like, they were right there. They were right across the, the, like a street from each other, you know, an alley almost. Yeah. But, um, but we didn't really mix that I remember. I mean, I, I, I don't know if any of our, did, did any, many of our actors come over to your set ever? Ciroc, or? No, there wasn't a big mix of the Voyager cast, actually. Uh, yeah. You know, the most I saw was Garrett. I think I saw Garrett the most out of your cast. Yeah. Um, and He's very that, he was a very sociable guy. And most of the socializing he did was uh, us running into each other in the alley. It wasn't really on each other's set. Yeah. Uh, I don't even know, other than the craft service, I don't know if I ever vo visited your actual set. <laughs> I, just, I just went to your craft service to, to, to pluck a few. <laughs> yeah. If if you're running low on candy on your side, you're over yeah. in, our, in our candy yeah. bowl. I need I an onion bagel. Onion. <laughs> For onion. You know, a lot of people have mentioned this alley. So we got to ask you, Robbie, do you remember this alley? And did you hang out there? Were you one of the cool kids that was always meeting at the alley? They're saying they would catch Ciroc playing basketball there. Oh, yeah. I remember that basketball hoop over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. Holy crap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't really hang out there. I mean, um, my memory, my memory of my time there, I, I was uh, married and I had young kids and uh, very pretty, really young kids. I think my daughter was four, my oldest, and I had like a four, a two, and then I had another kid in the middle of Voyager. So I was very much about like, I'd go to work, the hours are kind of long. And if I wasn't working, I was home, you know, being a dad. Um, and any any extra time, I was really focused on directing. I wanted to direct and learn about directing. And so I spent a lot of, you know, any time I had doing that. I didn't really, um, I didn't really hang out. I didn't play basketball, but I remember that hoop. I remember, I think Beltran, Beltran went over there a little bit or Garrett maybe. I don't know. I do remember that hoop over there. It was closer to your, your stage. It was over by Closer to us, yeah. I used to see uh, the cast of Wings. You remember that show, Wings? Yeah, sure. Oh, yeah. Wow. Uh, so I would see the cast of Wings there a lot. Uh, I think I played basketball with Denzel Washington a handful of times. Oh, that's uh, awesome. Yeah, so it was, it was good. Uh, that little basketball hoop got me some really cool uh, experiences with different people. I bet it I, did. Yeah, I, I remember playing uh, Clint Black. Clint Black used to be there a lot. Oh, the country, wow. the country singer. Sure. Huh. Yeah. So Clint Black would always. And he gave you his hat. He didn't give me his hat. But... <laughs> I like that hat, though, Sirac. <laughs> Let's just but... pause for a minute on the uh, hat. Uh, yeah, this is Clint <laughs> that Black is a inspiration. Good hat. Yeah. yeah, it is. <laughs> um, but you no, know, I got a chance to play with him, get to know him. He's such a really cool guy, really down to earth. Um, you know, he wasn't really a Star Trek fan, but he was yeah. just there uh, on the lot a lot. I remember, uh, I didn't play basketball, but we went through a phase, our cast, we would shoot over on stage. What was that stage that was way over by the back lot? Like I think it was 29 or 29, something like that's that. Something like that. It had a yeah. planet. The planet set was there, the caves and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Whenever we would go over there, we would play wiffle ball because we were kind of stuck away from our trailer. <laughs> And somebody, <laughs> somebody got like a wiffle ball and a bat and we would play wiffle ball and we'd always get in trouble with security because we weren't supposed to be hitting the ball. 
And then I remember one day, uh, Robin Williams was making the movie Birdcage on the lot. Mm -hmm. And Robin Williams was walking by and he saw us playing wiffle ball. And he goes, he's the one that started the conversation. He's like, oh my God, the Voyager cast. I love your show. And I love Neelix. He's my favorite character. And he started going off. Robin Williams played wiffle ball with us. And, and uh, we were having a blast. And then security came over and broke it up again. Like they always do. How did Johnny feel when he found out that Robin Williams said he was his favorite? He was very, um, very touched and honored. And, you know, he was, he was uh, very appreciative of that. To, to hear that from Robin Williams, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was the big, that was, I feel like, that was the biggest, like, celebrity crossover that I had on the lot was that time with the with Ball with Robin. That was <laughs> My biggest celebrity on the Fairmount lot was uh, uh, Tom Hanks. Wow. And I remember running into him. I was leaving one day doing my filming, and he was coming in the lot to do, uh, to have a meeting with Paramount executives about doing Forrest Gump too. Wow. And he's like, I'm on my way. I'm, go I'm, I'm late for a meeting. I'm supposed to be uh, meeting about Forrest Gump too. And I was like, wow, I just got breaking news that they're going to do Forrest <laughs> Gump too. You know? <laughs> uh, I don't but know he, though. Den I mean, basketball with Denzel is pretty big too, dude. Basketball yeah, with no Denzel kidding. was pretty good too. Yeah. But uh, one thing I remember about Tom Hanks is that he was in such a rush to go to this meeting but yet he still took like five minutes out to talk to me. Yeah. And he's like, so yeah, what's your name? What are you doing? What are you doing here on the lot? And I was like, wow, Tom Hanks is interested in <laughs> what the hell I have to say. Uh, so I thought that was pretty cool. I thought that was a uh, really down to earth thing for a, a yeah. superstar of his magnitude to be, mm -hmm. you know, in a rush for late for a meeting and still stop and talk to this, random black kid on the Paramount backlot. So I thought he was awesome for that. Yeah, that's super cool. So yeah, funny, what, like there's that, you know, your Tom Hanks story, Denzel, or the Robin Williams thing. The other celebrity thing I remember is Tom Cruise was doing a movie on the lot. I don't know if you remember this. And there was, they set up all the trailers in the, uh, I think they were in the tank by the, out by the parking lot where the, the big, um, the water, water tank, yeah. That water tank parking was, and yeah. they had it all blocked off with like these, these barriers because he didn't want any paparazzi or anybody to see him. It was like the opposite of Denzel or Tom Hanks. You know, Tom Cruise was like, he didn't want to be seen, and they had to put up these barriers so you couldn't even see the trailer and <laughs> secret. And <laughs> it was that was that was the biggest deal I remember of any celebrity on the lot was like. Hiding out, Tom Hanks hiding out. Tom Hanks hiding out. I mean, yeah. Tom Cruise. I mean, Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise. Yeah, well, I, I remember seeing uh, Harrison Ford's trailer once. And it was like a two story. I mean, it was like, <laughs> I've never seen a trailer like this in my life. I was like, what is this? That's and I go, that's Harrison Ford's trailer. Wow. Uh, so, yeah, we've had a lot of run ins uh, on the lot, you know, during our yeah. time. It's, 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 you know, it's you're in the right place for it. Yeah, it felt like Paramount back in the 90s felt like it still had that some of that old Hollywood the old Hollywood feel. feel. Yeah, it totally did. I don't know if it I don't know if those lots feel quite that way anymore cuz they don't make as many TV shows, they make, you know, uh, talk shows or dance shows or you know, a lot of the TV shows and, and the movies are filmed somewhere else. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, I remember them listening to yeah. those stories does feel like old Hollywood, you know, where you run into this guy and then there's this TV show going on and this guy joins you for basketball or wiffle ball. It sound, it does sound like old Hollywood stories, you know? Yeah. What were you and saying, the, Ciroc? Oh yeah. What were you no, I mean, it was just, it was a whole lot of that. Um, and they were doing so many productions at the time. I think they've, they've cut back on the amount of uh, productions that they have going at Paramount. Yeah. Um, a lot of the sound stages are used for set designing it now and, and set yeah. building. Um, but at that time, there were so many shows up over the course of the seven years that I can remember, uh, mm -hmm. NCIS was, uh, was, was yep. just starting off with JAG. I think it was JAG yep. was filming, um, Arsenio Hall show was on the line oh, yeah. at that time. No way. That's so yeah. cool. 
So uh, I used to hang out at the Arsenio Hall show to see what guests would show up for his show. Yeah. Um, and then there was just, you know, there were so many different productions on the lot at that time. So yeah. if you wanted to explore, which I had a lot of free time, uh, Robbie, I had a lot of free time to go from set to set and hop around. Yeah. Um, so I, I got a chance to really just uh, explore Paramount. I think I know Paramount backlot as well as uh, the architect or uh, engineer that <laughs> built the place. Do. I know a lot of little cubby holes there. <laughs> How old, what, what were the years, what was your age from beginning to end of DS9? What, what were your... Um, so from beginning to end, um, if you count the pilot, it was 13 to 21. Wow. Wow. Yeah, so technically it was an eight-year span for me, but it was seven years on the show. Wow. But it covered eight, birth eight birthdays, I guess you could say. That's but and that's really critical years in in growing up, you know, like yeah, all both. my teenage years essentially, my entire puberty and teenage yeah. years, yeah. So uh, wow. I used my lunch times to explore the the crevices of Paramount. I would be uh, anywhere from the executive suites uh -huh. to uh, I used to go to licensing a lot. Uh huh because they had a bunch of toys and stuff from yeah, all they types had, like, of the t toys and the <laughs> they games, had all the, the toys and games action so. figures yeah. yeah so if i ran out of things to keep me busy i'd go to licensing to get some new toys and new action figures that's funny um so yeah i had a really good time um exploring paramount it was awesome mm. that's cool so fast forwarding a little bit um you've got uh robbie you've got Kind of the unique perspective of never having had worked with Aaron, yeah. you really got to know him. You, you were saying through the convention circuit. So it wasn't until after all this is gone, no more Denzel, no more Ali, no. Uh, and now you're just seeing him at uh, the convention circuit. Do you remember what your first impression of him was? I, I don't know. I'm trying to remember like some of the first times. I remember he seemed to be friends with everybody. You know, that was one of my first impressions. This is like, wow, I don't know this guy, but he seems to know everybody and be friends with everybody. And he remembered everybody's name, which I'm horrible with. Like, <laughs> you know, I'm horrible. Uh, and there's so many people in this, in this, franchise actors and 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 in the convention world promoters and and just you know handlers and all that but he remembered everybody's name and was um just seemed to be a connector you know he was somebody that i was like wow he's a real he's a real connector and and i think that you know often in the in the fandom world i've i've seen sometimes people kind of um trying to connect but there's a like they have a career agenda right you know like oh i want to connect because i want to get a job with this person or i want to get on more conventions or whatever i never felt that from aaron i never i felt like when he was connecting with somebody like it didn't matter if it was you know ira somebody who was a showrunner level or whether it was a fan or a handler somebody helping him out at a convention that day he treated everybody the same you know, 100%, he was, um, he was friendly and enthusiastic and interested and curious about people, you know. That's one of my first impressions I remember of Aaron is yeah. he would ask a lot of questions, you know. He, would, he, would, he seemed curious, sincerely curious um, yeah. to get to know people. Only, and I, I was very attracted to that. I thought that was... Um, you don't see that a lot. You don't see that all the time. That kind of sincerity. So, yeah, that's probably my first impression. It takes a high level of energy to have that kind of enthusiasm consistently with everybody you meet and everybody you talk to, especially at a convention. Uh, sounds exhausting, but... Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's funny, because, like, um, I've heard people say before sometimes, like, like if you really sincerely connect with people, you'll actually get energy, you know, you'll be fed energy if 
and, and I've noticed that for me, like not, when I'm resisting, when I'm kind of like, when I'm kind of like, um, you know, trying to pretend, be, be pretend nice, but I really don't want to be talking to somebody. That's exhausting. Whereas I think for Aaron, I felt like he always got more energy out of that. You know, he was fed by people. He, he really, fed yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, he's a very special man. He really was. He was. Um, it's funny because as long as I've known him, I, I couldn't pinpoint the, the exact uh, time where I first met him. Like, I can't remember. And it's interesting how he grows on you. And, like, it's, yeah. it's as if he, you know, you're like, I don't remember exactly the moment I met yeah. you. But I just remember that we've, that I've met you and that I feel like you're being genuine. Yeah. And, and you are, you know, you know, your true self. One of the things that you, you, you know, I think was one of his best qualities was that he wasn't pretending. He wasn't hiding himself. Yeah, he yeah. wore, he wore everything out in the open. You yeah. know, this is who I am. This is what I'm dealing with, yeah. you know? And, and then you either, you could just take it or leave it. Yeah. You know, uh, and, and I feel like everybody it has, echoed those sentiments and even for my part I noticed that you know a few weeks back people asked me uh when did you meet Aaron how do you know him and I was like I I have no idea I it, it's probably a right around seven or eight years ago that's what it feels like but I truly don't remember the first time I met him it was probably at a convention I, I really don't remember but that's because when you met him he started talking to you as if you were old buddies, as if yeah. your best pals. It wasn't like you meet him once and then, you know, you get one little impression and then you meet him a second time and a third time. It was like, he immediately made you feel comfortable. Yeah. Um, he asked you where you're from, you know, who you know, what you're doing. And he was genuinely interested in people. So you don't really remember when you met him because it almost, it feels like he kind of almost always did, you know? Yeah. That's how he grows on you. Uh, that's one of his, his signature ways of getting close to people. It's almost like you've always known him. Um, yeah. And that's the beauty of Aaron's way. You know, it's, it's not overbearing. It's real. It's, he just subtly creeps into your life and you just, you're like, I like this guy. <laughs> you make it sound diabolical. <laughs> it's it's like not a diabolical. Man. I know. It's, it, it sounds diabolical, but it's actually a lot a lot simpler than that it's just it's just this casual way of getting to meet people and yeah. he's endearing and he grows on you you know it's just one of those things where you're like oh man um i enjoyed it i walk away feeling a pleasant feeling after i talk to him you know yeah it's still good like for me it was like it's about authenticity you know like um i think we have a radar for when someone's being authentic and and when it's just being small talk, you know, and, and I think at a lot of these conventions, I've experienced a lot of small talk because, you know, you're meeting people briefly, you know, fans or whatever, you're trying to get through 500 signatures or whatever the thing is. And so all you can do is like kind of be polite and try to be nice, but it's, it's kind of surfaced. He never stayed on this. He always found a way to, to get beneath the small talk and, and, Part of it was a sense of humor, you know? He was just smart and funny. And he would just, for me, he just made me laugh. And uh, <laughs> always, you know, he always had a comment or an opinion about something that was a little bit biting and sharp and smart and funny, but not mean. It was, you know, it wasn't mean, but, but you'd be like, you'd just be laughing a lot with him. And, uh, and sometimes I, I think that he used that to sort of break down any barriers, like make people laugh, get them comfortable, and then he could really be his authentic self. And that, uh, you know, that's how it felt for me with him is, you know, he, he'd just get me laughing. And then I didn't, and then I wanted to stick around and talk to him more. That's a good point. Uh, so you were saying uh, before we started recording that uh, kind of, the way you really got to know Aaron was that you guys would, would go out to eat, you know, during the, the convention. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. I mean, I, 
we had a lot of like, you know, meals at lunch together, you know, see them in the morning, go to breakfast, a lot of that kind of stuff and hanging out in the green room, you know. Um, my, my last memory of Aaron was uh, in Atlanta. He came to a very small convention there. He, he, he was like the main guest. It was a tiny little convention. Um, but he had reached out and said, hey, I'm coming to Atlanta. That's where I live. I live in normally in Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, um, so he reached out and we were like, let's grab a meal. And so we, we ended up meeting him uh, for breakfast on a Sunday before he had to do his convention and having a really nice talk because, you know, it was just me and Aaron and my girlfriend, Rebecca, the three of us met, you know, we, we went to meet him and um, we had a really nice talk, you know, really kind of got deep about family, about, you know, I'm a, I'm a divorced man. Uh, we, we talked about that, you know, we went into like what that experience is and how that affects your, your role as a father and your relationships and, you know, the, the, the hard parts of divorce and, and the, the good, you know, the growth that can come out of that. And we really had a great conversation. I remember talking about that, about how you, how he was, um, how much he loved his boys. He talked about that a lot, about being a father. You know, that's my, my, my last meal with him was, was a deep conversation about a lot of, you know, kind of important stuff for him and for me, things that we both connected on. So. Sirach, did you guys uh, ever go deep into a conversation? I know you guys definitely had your, had a lot of fun and hijinks and all that, but <laughs> we, never, we covered that one quite a bit. Did you guys ever kind of go, go deeper and really start talking about, you know, like the big things in life? Yeah, actually, it's funny because, Robbie, you were just talking about being a divorced uh, father. And when I was going through my separation and, and dealing with that, um, Aaron, was, uh, Aaron was one of the people that was there for me. And mm. you could sense that I was going through, you know, personal things. And he was somebody that uh, reached out to me and said, you know, I've been through this before and you're all right. You'll be all right. Uh, it's a low point in anybody's life when they have to go through a divorce. Um, it's, it's just a pain. It's just a fa painful process. Um, but it's also, if you have to go through it, you feel like it's necessary to move forward, but you have that period of grieving and that period of feeling down um, or depressed or however you want to put it. And uh, Aaron sensed that on me when I was going through that with my ex. So uh, we had those kinds of conversations about, you know, what it takes to heal and get past that. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he was he was always a guy that I felt like was willing to go as, as far as you're willing to go. If you want a joke, he's going to meet you and exceed whatever joke you're going to make, you know? If you want to talk about serious stuff, he'll go as far as you want to go. Uh, he was definitely, uh, we've mentioned this before, but he was definitely a great communicator. And he just loved to communicate, whether it was jokingly, whether it was seriously, whether it was philosophically or hypothetically. He always wanted to communicate. He always wanted to uh, discuss things and, and figure out things, you know, get through a problem, you know, solve something, you know, either either using you as a sounding board or helping you solve something, you know? Yeah. 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 I think the, the la that, that same breakfast that when I saw him back in the summer, um, he was talking about, uh, he, he brought something up. He, he said, you know, last time I saw you, he was very, he had been carrying this thing that he thought I was mad about potentially. Hmm. And the details don't really matter, but the fact that he had really been thinking about that and like he, he brought it up right away. He's like, Hey, you know, that thing that happened, like, I just want to make sure you're okay. And, and, and I was like, I can't believe you're even like, you've thought about this. Like it, it was really nothing, like it was nothing to me, but yet to him, like he didn't want to leave anything undone. He didn't want to leave anything, like you said, uncommunicated or, 
Mm-hmm. He was very sensitive to uh, other people's feelings and, and, and whether he offended you or not. Mm-hmm. And he carried that with him. And he, he would say that to me, exactly what he said to you, Robbie. He would say, you know, we had that uh, yesterday. I said this. And, yeah. uh, I hope you didn't take it the wrong way. I didn't mean to say this, this or that, but yeah. it may have come out that way. And I hope I didn't offend you. And I'm like, I, I completely didn't even think of it like that. But, exactly. but it was bothering him clearly that he had to get it out and clear the air. You know? yeah. um, and he took things on head on like that. That yeah. was one of the things that he did. He he didn't like shy away. Like if, if he had beef with you, he said, don't talk to me. <laughs> you know, it was like, yeah. You know, there wasn't like a gray zone where he'd pretend like he's friends with you if he wasn't. If he didn't like you and you weren't friends, then it was a clear, like, let's just not talk <laughs> to each other. How about we just not talk to each other? <laughs> That's the kind of person he is, you yeah. know? Yeah. Uh, and the other thing that I remember really strongly was how much he shared. Like if he had something to eat, he would say, hey, man, you want a piece of this? Or uh, if he was going to go to dinner and say, hey, you want to come with me? I'm going to go. Um, this last convention, he, he said, hey, I, I have a table at the creation. Why don't you share my table? Wow. Uh, you can stay in my room. I could share my room. Um, wow. So he was that kind of a really sharing person. Um, yeah, that's a good point. You're absolutely right. Yeah, no matter what it was, he was he just made himself available. He called me not too long ago. I think it was just like almost a couple of months ago. He said, hey, we're going to go camping, so I just wanted to know if you want to go camping. That's right. And he wanted to share that experience, you know. Don't worry yeah. about it. I'll, I'll take care of it. You know, we're going to go anyway, so you, you won't be a burden. Mm. Um, so even that, I mean, I just remember him sharing. And those kinds of people that you wish they have more because you know yeah. that the more they have, the more they share. You yeah. Know? Those are the guys you root for in life. Yeah, he uh, he definitely mentioned that that camping trip to me too. I was out of town. What was it like, Lake Casitas or something like? That? It was somewhere up in there. But you and I, we kind of discussed that before or recently, where we were thinking like, I mean, going camping with somebody is a whole is is an extra step above, man. You got to be really <laughs> yeah. comfortable with somebody. Yeah. More. I guess we're going camping together, bro. <laughs> yeah. That's way past second base. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> On what kind of game? Uh, no. <laughs> Ryan's good. Ryan is good. You got to watch Ryan. He's like, he's, he plays with words really well. I don't know. <laughs> no, but you're right. He was, he was very, uh, very sharing, and, very compassionate. Uh, yeah. And always inviting you to be, participate. Hey, I'm doing this thing. I'm mm-hmm. doing that. You want to come to dinner with us? What are you doing afterwards? Let's get lunch. I mean, he yeah. wanted to invite and share his time and his space, whatever he could. And I always yeah. uh, admired that about him. Yeah, agreed. Now, uh, we've only got a few minutes left, uh, Robbie, and thanks so much for joining us. Uh, but before we go, um, what do you think, like from your point of view, what what's Aaron's legacy? Like what's, What's something about him that you feel like he'll leave behind um, that people, maybe they know about or maybe they don't know about it, but just from your point of view? Hmm. Wow. I mean, he has so many qualities that we've talked about already, and I think all of those qualities are, are legacies of his. You know, the 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 modeling of sharing that he did, you know, that Sirach talks about, like, that's a, that's a great legacy that like, he's had an impact on everybody he's shared with that. I think they're going to share a little more in their lives because, because they've, they've been given that gift of, you know, by Aaron of, of, of experiencing that, um, you know, his kind of connection, his authenticity, I think is, is a legacy of, of um that he's going to share he was so authentic like we've talked about i think one th- one thing we haven't talked about is his gratitude with ever with all of it you know because yeah. there, here's somebody like you know you don't have to know a lot about him to know that he probably had some challenges in his life and he had more challenges than i can imagine you know with his health as a young as a young person and dealing with with his the, the kidney issues um, an adoptive mother, all kinds of, you know, adoptive parents. I, just so many things that 
a lot of people would take on as like resentments in their life, you know, mm -hmm. screw the world. Like, you know, I was adopted. Nobody cared about me or whatever. You could take that, that, that point of view. Right. And he didn't, he had an attitude of gratitude all the time. He was grateful for his health and, and, and how he overcame and was so lucky to, you know, and so grateful for, the doctors he had and, and the life that he had. He was grateful for the job on DS9. So grateful for that. He was grateful for his friendships and uh, he's grateful for the fans. It's just, I think gratitude is the big thing I take away from the lesson I take away from, from him. It's like looking, looking at my own life with, with that perspective and trying to keep a little bit of, of Aaron, you know, in my life. That's a, uh, yeah, that's a really good point. And he was definitely, he, he was definitely fully cognizant of the things in his life and why he was lucky. And he did feel lucky and he did feel gratitude and he did recognize the good things in his life and appreciate them. And, and another thing that you uh, touched on in there, really good point, you used the word impact uh, when you were saying uh, the, the people in his life were, were impacted by him. And it got me thinking that that's something that Aaron did that most people don't do is you didn't just know Aaron, you were impacted by him. I don't, I can't think of anybody that would say they knew Aaron, but were not impacted by him in some way. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. And to play off the gratitude, Robbie is, uh, I think one of the biggest things that he was grateful for was his work on DS9, that he was able to leave an uh, uh, acting legacy behind that would endure, and that his role and what he did was something that he could look back about, look back at and be proud of. Yeah. You know, that he, he, he made a difference, that he, he did a good job, and that he told stories that people uh, were impacted by. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it's funny. I mean, I, I, if, if I'm being honest, I spent seven years on Voyager looking beyond, you know, I, I don't think I was grateful. I, I, I know I wasn't grateful mm -hmm. in the way that I am now about that opportunity on Star Trek because, you know, I, I had a different point of view. I was like, oh, I just got to get my directing career going and then I'll be happy. I just got to, you know, I minimize things a lot and that, that didn't serve me well. And, you know, it's, it's taken me a long time to look back on Voyager, the seven years of Voyager, not just the fact that it allowed me to start directing, which has been great. And I'm really grateful for it's that. It's gone real well for you. It's, it's worked out great and I'm very grateful for it. I really am. But I'm also, I've learned to be grateful for just the acting, for the role that I played, for the, my fellow actors, for the impact it had on the fans, for the fact that, that uh, these stories made a difference in people's lives, you know? And uh, Aaron, somebody in, you know, I didn't have that as much as he did. And the more I got to know Aaron, the more I was able to look back at my own experience with Star Trek and kind of go, wait a minute, like that was meaningful. And I, and I should, I should, I need to, and I want to kind of look at that differently and not, you know, uh, minimize it in some way, but to really own it and embrace it, that it, that it was a, a great accomplishment. And it, and it, me it meant a lot to, to a lot of people. So it's, yeah. it's really, it, for me, I've, I've grown into a place of gratitude and, and Aaron and people like Aaron that have helped me along that path to kind of look back and go, Hey, I, you know, I, I appreciate this. I, I didn't. I didn't appreciate it maybe at the time, but I appreciate it now in a whole different way. Yeah, kind of leading by example in that case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, as an actor, I know I've done a lot of work that I would rather not see again, you know, and stuff that I would would, would hope is some <laughs> bit is buried away somewhere. It's never going to be buried, vault, man. Paramount vault, you know, but. Uh, with Star Trek, it's it's something that you know all, all, every one of the actors on the, all the shows um, have contributed their part in this bigger picture, in this larger quest, in this bigger vision, and um, 
and the fact that it reaches the fans and the fans are so supportive that the messages uh, are something that the fans can hold on to and continue to celebrate. Yeah. It is one of the true blessings of, of any actor to be a part of something like this. Absolutely. Uh, and yes, there is the, there is the, the common uh, ma mistake of looking forward, farther forward when you're doing something as an actor. It's always about the next job, right? Yeah. Um, this is helping me so that I can get the next bigger job or the next other thing that I want to do. Um, and so we're always trying to look forward to this longer career that we have in our mind. Um, but to sit back and say, oh, yeah, well, to appreciate it in the moment, I think Aaron did that as well as anybody else could mm. have done. Agreed. Which is knowing in that moment how special it was to be there. Yeah. He, so. he was definitely very in the present. He was in the present. Yeah, that's true. Uh, and Robbie, by the way, from a fan's point of view, uh, we are grateful that you stuck out those seven seasons. Uh, we're very happy about that, and you were great there. And we're also very happy for you that you achieved the goal of moving on to director. I think that's that's awesome. Um, you know, you there's nothing wrong with looking forward and having a goal and trying to improve yourself and make your life better and make your life happier. And it seems like you did that, so we're really happy for you. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I wouldn't. Uh... Yeah, I wouldn't be uh, doing the things that I do these days if it wasn't for my opportunities on Star Trek and and the things that I learned there. Uh, you know, I, I love, Sirak, what you just said, that bigger picture, that bigger sort of tapestry that we're all a part of. Like, there was something in Gene Roddenberry's vision or or the, the cocktail of, like, his vision and the other writers and actors that became a part of it, and even the fans' input. Like, the fans have molded and shaped this franchise as much as anybody else. Like, the fans, the feedback and the messages that they send, and, and, and it's this kind of conversation that's gone on for 50 years now around Star Trek and an and, and idea of a better, a better world and a better place for, for all of us that that bigger picture, I've carried that, that, that gift, you know, into every show I do. I, I, I see it more and more as I get older and do this longer that like, yeah, there's stuff I, I got out of that bigger picture, that bigger tapestry that, that, uh, that I think I, I, I like to bring into any, everything I do now, you know, the work that I do. So yeah, it's been, it's been Star Trek's been good to me. Uh, me as well. And you know, one of the other luxuries of Star Trek is the fact that it does have conventions. <laughs> yeah. I don't, uh, I haven't done another, sh <laughs> uh, I, well, I haven't done another show that has a following big enough where you can still be celebrated 20 years after you finish. Yeah. You know, um, it's, it's one of the few and it's, it's an honor to be a part of that. Yeah. Um, it's a family. I look at it really as a family. It's yeah. quite a perk too. Well, it's a, it's the gift that keeps giving, mm. and it is also the ability to get in touch with the fans that have supported you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we we are not we're nothing without our fans. If the people don't like us, if if they don't want us, then we we don't make it. And uh, so, all of us owes our fans, our, our, our people that are loyal to us. We owe them. Uh, the chance to get to know us better. We owe them uh, the chance to continue supporting us if, if they so choose. And uh, the conventions gives you the opportunity to get that uh, accomplished. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. So uh, we're just about out of time here. Um, that's a really good point about the conventions though. Um, Robbie, thank you so much for uh, joining us all the way up in Vancouver, by the way. Uh, for yeah. Those at home. Oh, Rainy, really? Rainy a, Vancouver. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's the, the, we got the temperature in the 90s here in LA, and he's enjoying the rain for us. Now, do you live out there or are you working out there? I just came up about a month ago to start a new TV show for Sci Fi Channel. I'm producing and directing on the show. It's called oh. Re Resident Alien, and it is a. Uh, it's based on a comic book. Hang on. Here's one of the comic books. 
Resident Alien. Okay. Is that is that backwards? No, no, that's right. It's regular. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a. It's a comic book series, a kind of like a mashup between Northern Exposure, the small town with all these quirky people, and the town doctor is uh, is an alien, but he looks like a human, and uh, and nobody knows except for an eight year old kid that lives in town. So it's it's a fun premise. Cool. A lot of comedy, some action, some sci fi. It's yeah, it's gonna be fun. Well, now, are you on pre-production with that, or is that already? No, we ha we don't start shooting for a few more weeks, and we're building sets right now, and and just kind of getting getting everything going. And uh, yeah, I'm producing this show. I'm an executive producer on the show, and uh, which I really love that job. You know, the directing sort of became this producing mm -hmm. this producing job, and uh, I really enjoy the producing because it's so. It's global, you know. I get to to look at all the parts of the show and really impact um, the big picture. And and also for me, like the experience of the cast and the crew as we make it. You know, I really one of the things I'm proudest of when I get to produce these shows is I try to bring a sense of family and and connection to the crew and the cast and you know um, team building and. I just have a positive life experience. Uh, most of these shows come and go, you know, they come and go and not all of them stick. And, you know, Star Trek's a, a very rare uh, example of something that really sticks around. But a lot of the shows that I've worked on in the past, they come and they go. And um, the thing I remember, the thing I always remember the most is my experience of the crew and the cast and, and what it was like when we made it. And so that's, one of the things I try to focus on is uh, mm. making it a good life experience for everybody. So we got a good crew, and Alan Alan Tudyk is the star. He was. Uh, oh, we know him. Yes, yeah. Alan Alan's awesome, and so he plays the alien, and he's very very good in the pilot. That they shot the pilot already. Um, yeah, it's gonna be a fun show. Wow, Ciroc's got a nose for the breaking news. First it was Forrest Gump two, and now it's. Uh... Resident, Resident Alien, yeah. Resident <laughs> Alien. Yeah. On Sci-Fi Channel, check it out. That's exciting with Alan Tudyk. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, they we'll were be just, looking forward to that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, they they just I didn't join them because I was here getting this the offices and stages together, but the cast went to New York Comic Con uh just a few weeks ago and they they did a big panel and presentation. They screened the pilot for uh, New York Comic Con, it had a real good reception there. So yeah, I think people are, are excited. We're excited to make it. So. Great, All right. well, thank you so much, by the way, for taking time out of your obviously busy schedule. You're actually at work right now, so. <laughs> I am actually at work. <laughs> we appreciate, yeah. we appreciate sure. that a lot. Sure. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you for uh, giving us a moment to, you know, pay homage to Aaron and of getting to know more about what you're doing. Yeah, thank you. It's, it's been good. Thank you. Yeah, it's been beautiful to see sort of the, I wish Aaron could see, mm -hmm. you know, wish he could see it. Yeah. Well, he's, look, he he's looking down on us. I'm sure he's watching. Good. Yeah. I'm sure he's watching us from upstairs. Yeah. He's still, he's still creating this show. I mean, we're, we're still talking about him. Uh, we're still learning new things about him. Absolutely. Um, yeah. I wish you could see it too. Well, thank you guys for inviting me. And anytime, you know, you want to do it again, uh, we'll do a, we could do a little inside resident alien at some point once we get up and shooting. So, Oh, that's, Ooh. that sounds awesome. Yeah. It's in the sci-fi world. So definitely. Is. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Let's do that. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. All we'd right. love to have you again. Thank you so much. Awesome guys. Thank you. Great. And thank for those much. of you at home, uh, always remember the seventh rule.